the Israelites in British and European history. Universal Center for Renovation presents historical and biblical Israelites. This video is strictly for educational purposes and commentary on biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy. This video is about the Israelites, the biblical Israelites in British and European history. Most of us have read the stories or at least heard the stories of the biblical children of Israel, of Moses and Joshua, King David and Solomon. And many of us was amazed by these strange biblical narratives. We read about the children of Israel in Egyptian bondage and slavery and how they was delivered. We read about their dreams, their aspirations, and their hopes. We read about their struggles and their calamities and how they were eventually vanquished out of their lands by their neighbors but why and where did they go and who are they today this is an amazing and captivating history story one thing we do know is that they were driven into all lands and they left written documentation artifacts and pictorial documentation of the lands that they were exiled in. Their struggles, their low and high times in those different regions of the world. This is a video about some of their history in Europe. According to Maine stream history, this image should not exist because the Normans were Germans and the Germans were not people of color or at least that was what we were misled to believe. And here we have a artifact, pictorial representation of a knight from medieval European history. Obviously you can see that he's a man of color and he's standing next to his lady. He's no ordinary knight. He wears a crown. Unfortunately, on his chest, was his coat of arms, but the symbol has been washed away. We can only imagine who this knight was, his family origin or line. This is from Sex and Race Volume 1 by J.A. Rogers. And the caption reads, Negro Norman Knight with his lady. But to show what many might consider a random image of one Norman Knight might not lead to the conclusion that there were many Norman Knights who were people of color, many German 
Knights who were historically biblical Israelites. But we have to take this history and context. So this doesn't seem to be an unordinary image or picture. We have to show that this image was the norm. So let's begin with a little continental European history. 500 years before the beginning of the Roman Empire, which started in 27 BC, about 500 years before that, the prophet Daniel, the Israelite prophet Daniel, who was living in the Near East, Babylonia, Babylon, today modern Iraq and the Near East, he prophesied and correctly predicted the rise and the fall of the Roman Empire. Daniel had visions of events that would occur 500 years into the future. Let's listen to some of Daniel's records of this future history. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and broke in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that was before it, and it had ten horns. Daniel chapter 7 verse 7. The prophet Daniel predicted the rise and the fall of the Roman Empire. Daniel lived in the 6th century BCE in the Near East. Read the whole chapter of Daniel or the book of Daniel chapter 7 to read about the predictions of the different empires or the four successive empires that will come to rule from the time of Daniel to the time of the Roman Empire. Daniel correctly predicted the Roman Empire rulership and its downfall. The Roman Empire controlled a great part of the ancient world. From the Near East, Europe and North Africa, Great Britain to France, Germany, Spain, Italy, Eastern Europe, Turkey, Syria, the Near East, Egypt, and North Africa. Originally, the children of Israel had 12 divisions known as tribes. The different empires of the Near East, Assyria, Babylon, Medes and Persians, Greeks, and finally the Romans went to war with the 12 tribes of Israel. In the days of the Romans, there were only three tribes left, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. The other tribes were expelled out of their lands. And eventually the Romans expelled the last three tribes of Judah, Benjamin and Levi. Europe in 350 AD, just before the collapse of the Western Roman Empire. The Western Roman Empire is color coded and colored green. The purple is the Eastern Roman Empire. The Eastern Roman Empire color-coded in the color purple would be later known as the Byzantine Empire. This empire contained territories in Europe 
that would include Greece, Southeastern Europe, Turkey, Syria, Palestine, Cyprus, Crete, Egypt, North Africa, Libya, and parts of Russia near the Black Sea. The ancient biblical Israelites traveled and lived in Europe since the days before Solomon, 1000 BC. There were travelers, merchants, soldiers. They made alliances with the Mycenaeans and the Minoans. There's a long, long history of Israelites living within the Greek world. The Eastern Roman Empire, the region in purple, the population of that part of the Roman Empire, they spoke Greek. In the Western part of the Roman Empire, those parts highlighted by the color green, they spoke Latin. The ancient biblical Israelites have a long history in the region of Western Europe, especially Spain. Ancient Spain was known biblically as Tarshish, and King Solomon sent ships to Tarshish. He had navy ports for his navy in Tarshish. Israelites have a long history with the Western Europe before the Roman Empire. The Western Roman Empire included areas such as parts of North Africa, Spain, France, Germany, Britain, Southeastern Europe, and Italy, Sicily, Corsica, Sardinia. This map is a map of the Roman Empire divided east and west around the time 350 AD. In this period in history, both the east side of the Roman Empire and the west side of the Roman Empire, both sides were being controlled by Israelites who rose up in the ranks the military ranks. Also, many were senators. They were rulers of the Roman Empire by this time. So this map indicates Europe under Roman occupation. And each of these little Roman soldiers indicates or pinpoints an area of Roman occupation and territory controlled by Rome. As you can see, the only area in Europe or areas in Europe that wasn't controlled by Rome was controlled by Germanic barbarians. But these Germanic barbarians, the ruling class consisted of biblical Israelites that were living in Germany since the time of the Assyrian Empire. These German barbarians, they were subject to the Assyrians and the Persians. These men came out of the Persian Empire. So many of the customs of the barbarians, the Germans, were actually Persians. Historians call this group of people, at least their language, Indo-European because they came out of this region from India to Europe through the Persian Empire. And this soldier on the top, an orange, this soldier on a horse, this German barbarian, represents regions in Europe 
controlled by the Germans and not the Romans. East Romans or West Romans. These Germans would be the future rulers of Western Europe. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ or the Messiah is all in and all. Colossians chapter 3 verse 11. Barbarians are the Germans. Scythians are the Russians. These are Israelites who lived as Germans and Israelites, Scythians, who lived as Russians. And this man on horseback, this German barbarian, who ancestry leads back to the biblical Israelites, this man is representative of the Visigoths. Even though this German barbarian represents all Germans, Jutes, Angles, Saxons, Franks. But in this particular history, this particular German barbarian is a Visigoth. So in this image, we can see on the right in the purple is a Byzantine emperor. A ruler of the Eastern Roman Empire. On the left is a ruler of the Western Roman Empire. And this territory is marked by the area in green. And the Western Romans are about to lose their territory to the German barbarians. The man represented by the rider on the horse. The biblical Israelites are known historically through archeology, span through the Bible as people of dark complexion or people of color, from dark complexions to light complexions. German barbarians are not known by mainstream academia as people of color. So the proof of the burden to prove that these German barbarians were Israelites is on me, right? So let's follow a biblical precept. Prove all things, hold fast, that which is good. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 21. German Visigoths. The ruling element or the ruling class of these German barbarians were men who ancestry led back to the biblical Hebrew Israelites. The Visigoths were a Germanic people, Germans, united under the rule of a king and living within the Roman Empire during late antiquity. The Visigoths were subsequently settled in southern Gaul or France as Federata, Germans who made peace treaties to the Romans, a relationship that was established in the year 1418 this developed as an independent kingdom with its capital at Toulouse, France. And they, the Visigoths, extended their authority into Hispania or Spain. They ruled France and Spain and they made peace treaties with the Romans. Historically, the Visigoths became Christians. Aryan Christians and they left manuscripts that they created while they ruled Spain. 
these manuscripts, these Visigoth manuscripts were Bibles written in the language of the Visigoths, Germans, German language speaking barbarians. These manuscripts were pictorial, very colorful images of biblical characters such as David, King Solomon, so on. These images, these manuscripts were written and drawn by the Visigoths. So this will give you an accurate depiction on what the Visigoths, how they saw themselves. In this book, The Golden Age of the Moor, edited by Ivan van Sonoma, this famous and well-known scholar gives the contributions historically of the Moors. What's important to this scholar or the scholars who put this book together was the fact that when the Moors invaded Spain in the year 711 they fought against the armies of the Visigoths so the Visigoths lost Spain to the invading Moors so the Visigoths played a vital role in history as the German barbarians who lost Spain In this book, The Golden Age of the Moor, on page 53, there's an image from a Visigoth manuscript. It's labeled figure 18. Black Christian soldier of Spain, Visigoths, fighting invading Moors of 710 to 711. These are the guys, the Visigoths, that lost Spain. This manuscript dates from 1150 AD. An image of German Visigoths, the ones who lost Spain to the Moors, Black Christians soldiers of Spain fighting invading Moors. This image on the right is from the book The Golden Age of the Moor. But the image on the left is the actual manuscript image, the Visigoth manuscript of the exact same image and soldier, this black Christian soldier, Visigoth, German of Spain. And this is an image of the complete picture. These manuscripts are kept in Madrid, Spain. These are invaluable images because these are the images of the original protectors of Christian Europe, German barbarians, Visigoths, who fought against the invading Muslim armies of Moors. Biblioteca Nacional de España. The Biblioteca Nacional de España or National Library of Spain is a major public library, the largest in Spain and one of the largest in the world. It is located in Madrid, 
And this library was founded by King Philip V in 1711. These images of Christian Visigoths of Spain are not only national treasures for Spain, but national treasures for Christian Europe, and also artifacts and proof that the Visigoths, the Germans of Europe, at least the ruling class, were people of color. These people of color, historically, were children of the biblical Hebrew Israelites. Thank you.